reasons. Okay, so many, many, many occasions as a young child where I've become aware of or been subjected to prejudice or discrimination, but I think the most potent experience in my lifetime came in my teens, and I think I'd have to say that would be in history class, as many of us will probably have the same experience, either consciously or subconsciously, where we suddenly become aware of the extremity by which we were, you know, enslaved, robbed of our culture, robbed of our identity, robbed of our names, beaten, brutalized, just subjected to the most horrendous humanitarian injustices on the history of the planet. But I think the biggest issue for me at the point of realization was coming to terms with the fact that our education system presents that information in a way which you know, looking around the class and seeing people with, a, you know, a different skin colour to me and realising, wow, they're actually being subconsciously empowered by this information, by this idea of their cultural superiority. Whilst at the same time, we are just oh so subtly being subjugated with this idea of our inferiority. And it was an explosion of consciousness for me. I suddenly saw, sort of, everything suddenly became about colour. You know, I'd be sitting in another class and, um, you know, the teacher would turn around and there'd be four or five of us misbehaving maybe or talking or doing something we weren't supposed to be doing. And this teacher would pick me out and say, Paul, you know, you know, why are you misbehaving? And I'd sort of rise up and I'd sort of say, well, hey, hang on a minute. Why have you picked me? Why have you chosen me as the one, you know, and, you know, why, why, why finger me out? You know, what's, what's different about me uh, knowing what I was getting at? And the response will always be the same. Oh, right, you know, you're... You know, you're just a troublemaker. You know, you've got a chip on your shoulder. Well, you're all the same, that sort of thing. And then realizing, wow, it's not just me. It's not just people of color who are, are being conditioned subconsciously by the way that the education system teaches us about slavery and about our you know, history or lack thereof as it's put to us in school. Everyone is, is, is being subjected to this. People who you know, don't look like me are building an opinion based on how they're educated and it's permeating into every different avenue of society. You know, the media are presenting us in a negative light. You switch on the TV uh, and you're sitting there and you're seeing black people cast as the villain, cast as the bully, cast as the thug, cast as the drug dealer. You open up the papers and it's like you know black this and black that and you know headlines and you know the same is happening now knife crime um, is another classic example of that we're gonna go into an area which is predominantly black yeah and report that knife crime is a predominantly black problem well of course it is because statistically if you go into a black area a predominantly black area that's what you're going to see you know go to Glasgow and report on knife crime is it gonna be a predominantly black problem no it's not so it's realizing that unfortunately our education system, in my opinion right now, is slightly flawed. And the reason it's flawed is because it's not presenting the negativity of uh, slavery. At no point in time when slavery was taught in school do I remember any teachers saying, but wait a minute everyone, that was wrong. Let's just clarify that what happened here was wrong. It's just taught in a way that conditions people to either feel that they are culturally superior or culturally inferior. And, you know, many, many years later, as I'm, you know, in my 40s now, it's still happening. I mean, I'm a successful businessman now, and, you know, without bragging, I wear suits to work and I drive a nice car. And I turned up to seeing a, a client at an appointment a couple of months ago, this year, and I uh, pulled up and I got out of my car and I went to walk into his house. And the first thing he said is, oh, nice car, Paul, you'd have got a new car. Um, <laughs> funny, when you turned up, I thought, oh, who's this drug dealer? coming, you know, to knock on my door. And I thought to myself, well, hang on a minute. Why do I look like a drug dealer? I'm wearing a suit. I'm wearing a business suit. You know, I've come to do business with you. Why am I a drug, why do I look like a drug dealer? What does a drug dealer look like? But of course, society tells you that a drug dealer looks like me, you know, which is wrong. That is wrong. You know, I've recently come across people who've turned around and met me for the first time and said, Paul, you know, I've got to say, I'm really surprised because, you know, you're really well-spoken, you're really articulate. And I'm thinking, well, why shouldn't I be well-spoken? Why shouldn't I be articulate? Why do you expect me to uh, not be able to articulate myself clearly or to use poor language? That is the conditioning that you've been subjected to and it starts, I believe, with our education system. So what, what I like about Black History Month is it is an opportunity for us to embrace our own history in a way that it's not embraced in schools and in the education system, but it's not enough. We don't need a Black History Month. We need a Black History situation, a Black History education. You know, when they're telling people about slavery, they need to understand 
and communicate that our history didn't begin with slavery. Our history is rich, it's illustrious. You know, we were sophisticated. We did have cultural uh, quirks and you know, social structures. And, you know, we were, we were a civilized and respectful community of people who just unfortunately for us didn't have the same capacity to kill at mass and to enslave as, as those who conquered us. But for me personally, that's, that's kind of a big deal. So if I was going to give any advice to my younger self, I think that advice would be never let anyone define who you are. Never apologize for someone else's ignorance and don't feel that you have to prove anything to yourself or to anyone else based on their ignorance or their negative assumptions as to who you are as a person just based on the color of your skin. You see, fortunately for me, um, I'm a very determined individual and when people tell me I can't do something, I set out to prove them wrong. Now that worked to my advantage. You see, in school I was privately educated, my parents um, made a great deal of sacrifice to put me in an education system that cost them a great deal of money uh, to make sure that I made the best of myself and I thank them for that. That's something that I can, I can never thank them enough for. But when I was placed in that situation as a minority, the one thing that struck me was that everyone expected me to fail. And, you know, I used that as motivation to succeed in life. And, you know, I went on to make sure that I was actually the top then, well, I suppose the top boy in my class. You know, I, I, I got the best qualifications, best grades um, at GCSE level. I went on to get the best grades in my year at A level. I went on to get my law degree. You know, I've published a book. I'm a successful businessman. All of these things I've used to fuel me in the right way. But I wish, going back, I would have probably done those things for myself as opposed to prove a point to other people about what I'm capable of. The end result was the same, but I wish I'd have done it for me as opposed to do it just to prove something about myself based on my color so I can stand up and say, hey, I'm an example of someone that doesn't have to have a microphone in his hand or doesn't have to be holding a ball to be successful. And I think that's the message I would send to my younger self or to any other black person out there at the moment who may be struggling with the, the notion that they're maybe not good enough or not smart enough or not capable. The message I would give to you is that you are just as capable as anyone else out there and always strive to be great, strive to be the very best you possibly can be uh, and do it for yourself, do it for you, do it for your family. Don't do it just to prove a point to other people who might look at you and think that you're worth less than you really are. Mm -hmm.